Hi, and welcome to Healthier Family Relationship. I am so happy to have you for this day. I have a special speaker today, and her name is Erica Katz. Welcome, Erica. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here to talk to you. So, my first question is, you like to say, think like a mom, but parent like a coach. Why is it so important? Well, a lot of parents think that the kids should decide what we do. I hear a lot of parents, especially, okay, when their kids misbehave, they'll say, why did you do that? What difference does it make why they did that? They did it and you have to handle it, right? So when you think of a football team, the coach makes the rules, the players don't make the rules. So if you're a mom or a dad, if you think of yourself as the head coach of your team, right? Your kids are your team, then you make the rules and the kids have to listen. And if you're married, if your spouse, your partner, whoever helps you raise your kids, could be the grandmother, the aunts, the uncles, whoever it is, you all have to be playing by the same playbook. Meaning, if mom makes a rule, everybody has to support it so that the kids see a united front. Because remember, if you're a football player, the coach makes the rules and then they have a lot of supporting coaches. There's a quarterback's coach, there's all different coaches on a football team, but they all support the head coach. Now imagine, if you're the quarterback on a football team and the head coach tells you to do something, but then the quarterback's coach says, eh, don't listen to the head coach. You don't know what to do. This happens in families a lot. So mom will say, your curfew's at 11, you can't go out. Dad will say, eh, don't listen to mom. If you wanna stay out till 12, it's fine. What's the message to the kids? Don't listen to your mom, dad's gonna say it's okay or, or, or it can happen vice versa. And especially, I see it a lot in divorced families where sometimes the kids with the father and sometimes the kids with the mother or kids with the mother, the mo whatever, whatever your situation is, you have to be united whether you are together as a couple or you are not. You have to come from the same place with the same set of rules. Consistency is key. Whether you're coaching a football team or co coaching a family, you always wanna be consistent in your message. Always one message. So that's why I say, think, think like a mom, right? Like what should your kids do and not do? But you have to parent like a coach. And also when you're a parent, there are three really important things you have to do. You have to prepare your kids, you have to always be consistent, and you need to hold them accountable. So what does this mean? If you're a football coach, you need to prepare your team for whatever's coming, right? They have to be prepared to play in the, in the rain and the snow and sunshine in their eye, whatever it may be, because they don't know what's coming. Likewise, when you're a parent, you have to prepare your kids for different situations. So if you read something in the news, and you're sitting around the dinner table and you read something that uh, a girl posted something on the internet and people made fun of it and bullied them for it. You talk to your children and you say, hey, what do you think would happen if you post the same kind of picture or the same kind of scenario on the internet? What would you do? What do you think would happen? By walking them through that scenario, it's not about them, it's something that happened to somebody else. You're actually preparing them so that if they're sitting and thinking, oh, maybe I'm gonna post that bikini picture, or maybe I'm gonna you know, post that inappropriate thing, maybe they're gonna think twice because you already went through it with them, what they should and shouldn't do. So that's preparation. Consistency I talked about before, everybody has to have the same message. And also you have to have the same consequences. So if you say, if you come home late for curfew, then next week you have to come home earlier. You have to stick to that. That That is the consistency of the consequence. And, and then finally, you really need to make sure that your kids understand that you mean business and you have to hold them accountable. So that means, what I hate to see is parents who say, if you do this, I'm gonna take your cell phone, I'm gonna throw it out the window. No, you're not. That cell phone's a thousand dollars or eight hundred, whatever that cell phone costs, you're not throwing it out the window. So don't threaten to do that because you're never going to follow through. So whatever you say you're going to do, you're going to do. If you say to them, if you don't pick up those sneakers, I'm taking them away. You're never getting them back. Well, guess what you have to do if, if, if they don't pick up those sneakers, you got to take them away. So always keep a consequence that you're prepared to do. So if you have teenagers, a great consequence is not letting them go out with their friends on a Friday night, because then you get to go to bed earlier. 
And it doesn't hurt you to take that away from them. I mean, maybe now it does during COVID, but in a normal situation, <laughs> taking that away is not so difficult. So make sure you give them a consequence that you are ready to follow through on because follow through is what makes a great parent. Do what you say you're gonna do. Because if you don't, your words mean nothing. Mm -hmm. And what what would happen if, you know, the parents are, you know, depending on, on the situation, on the family situation, what will happen to the children when um, the parents, the people who are educating the, the, the child are not in the same team in a way that they are just backfire each other and as you said they don't want to follow the head coach so what do you do you, can you tell us um, about the consequences that 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 behavior that the coach's behavior can have on the child so basically when you give your child a mixed message mm -hmm. the child can take the message they want right the, the child is always going to to want something they can't have, right? That's part of being a child. You want to stay up late. Look, if it were up to kids, they would eat candy for breakfast, right? <laughs> you can't let the kids do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're parenting that child and you're exhausted and they're driving you crazy, you might just say, oh, have that candy for breakfast, okay? Mm -hmm. But that's not good parenting. I mean, that's an extreme example. But if you have two parents and one parent says you have to eat protein and you have to drink your juice and you have to eat a healthy breakfast and the other parent says oh, just yeah. have a donut mm -hmm. right the, what happens is the child ends up wanting to be with the parent who gives them the donut so in mm -hmm. many ways it can be manipulative of a parent because a lot of the parents want their kids to love them but here's the key about your kids loving you kids love you no matter what Kids love their parents. I mean, you hear stories about kids and they love their parent. It was horrible to them, right? But there's just this feeling of a child. It may change as they get older, but children, mm -hmm. they just, they love their parents. It's, it's part of being a child. So you don't need to do things to make them love you if mm -hmm. the thing is not in their best interest. You don't need to give them donuts for breakfast to make them love you. You don't need to say yes all the time and give them every toy they want because you want them to love you. Kids understand and kids feel love because love is not toys. Love is not presents. Love is not mm -hmm. donuts, candy, and sugar. Mm -hmm. You know what love is? Love is being there. Love is drying their tears. Love is being their cheerleader. Love is saying, I got your back. Love is saying, I know you're having trouble in school. I'm going to help you do better. You and I are going to work together as a team. So love is showing support is being that cheerleader, is being in there for them, is watching them. I'll tell you what makes children not feel love, is looking at your cell phone while you're talking to your children. That's when people, kids feel ignored. How many times do you, you're at a soccer game and the kid is playing and the parent is like this? Mm. No, you have to be watching your child on the field because they see you. And you know, a lot of parents will feel, well, my kid's not playing, I can be on my cell phone then. But that's the time you really have to watch. Are they talking to their teammates? Are they part of the team? Are they off to the side? Do they feel included? Because that's when you get the, the, the good stuff, right? Because you want to know how your child is doing socially. You want to know where they fit in among their peers. And you won't know it if you don't observe them. So when you're with your children, if you really want to show them love, put down your cell phone, look them in the eye and have a conversation. That's good, and and it's it's really important that quality time that you know and and that that um, you 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 transfer value to them and that you show them also that you have more to gain by spending quality time with someone than just being on on your phone. I tell you something. My first book is called Bonding Over Beauty, yes. and the concept with the book was that I wanted to get my daughter to talk to me because I had a very hard time getting her to open up. She just didn't want to tell me things. Mm -hmm. But then, she was little at the time, yeah. when I would brush her hair, or I'd put on her makeup, or I'd put cream on her face, or I'd put cream on her hands, all of a sudden she started to talk. And then, you know, we'd go for mommy-daughter manicures, and even to this day, she's 17 years old, we will, we took a dance class online together, because she saw I was doing it, so she wanted to do it with me. We go, we'll go to the nail salon together, we do these things to connect, and Those things are what she's remembered, and those are the ways I've gotten her to talk. Now with my son, my son has always been very into basketball, and mm -hmm. so my way in with him was basketball. Now I knew nothing about basketball, but when he was into it, 
I became a basketball mom. Mm -hmm. I went to every game. I learned the game. I learned what to say to him after a game. I made a mistake once, and this is good to know. After a game, he he didn't play well, and right after the game, I started talking to him about it. Well, he was not ready for that conversation. Mm. And I learned, because you know, I wasn't a basketball player, how would I know? That after the game, especially if it's a bad game, you need to give them the cooling off time, you need to sort of let them mourn mm. the loss or whatever it is, mm. feed them, because you don't want to talk to a boy <laughs> before he's been fed, or a girl, but especially mm. a boy, feed them, let them shower, let them unwind, and then when they're ready and they want to talk about it, then you talk. So. It's really about connecting and communication and finding what your child is interested in. I find like my daughter, she loves anything to do with beauty. So that was my way in with her, but it could be different for different families. Mm -hmm. And you know, what interests you is not necessarily what interests your child. Like mm -hmm. my son is into basketball. That wasn't really my interest, but I made it my interest. I made it my obsession because it was his obsession. You know, not obsession, but you know what I mean? I made it my, my, my way to talk to him. And then mm -hmm. everything comes from there. Because the worst thing you can do is expect to be, I say, you 2.0. They're not gonna become a better version of you. They're gonna be who they are, and you need to, as a parent, allow them to be that person and help them be that person, even if it has nothing to do with what is interesting to you. 